Hello, this is Transformers Fan G138, and I'm here with a video review of Transformers Generations Thrilling 30 IDW Bumblebee. And I actually like this guy. I don't normally appreciate Bumblebees at all because I'm just sick of seeing him, especially in a sports car version because it just reminds me of the movie one. But this one is actually really good. I actually like this one. I mean, I like the Classics B because it's Classics B, but I do like this one. I I really don't like him in the IDW comics, and I really don't like him in the movies. I really don't even like him in the original cartoon. I'm just not a Bumblebee fan. Although, I have like 56 different Bumblebees, because they just keep producing them these days. But, alas, here's another one. I actually like this one. Um, I do have a slight problem on mine, and that this, these windows will not clip together. I've tried everything, there's a little bit of plastic, or some, uh, a little bit of plastic, uh, film there that's preventing it. I, I think that's just a quality control issue. Not bad. Um, yeah, so it's not that big of an issue. Although, it, it, I mean... I'm never going to really display it in this mode anyway, so it's not going to bother me. Uh, he does have these weird gun-like things on his side here that peg there. They don't peg in far. Um, these will turn into his guns. But uh, you can actually turn them into jetpacks if you want to. Or not jetpacks, but uh, jet things. You know, like animated. Or you can just spin them around like this. Then you have the yellow on the outside instead of the inside. Which, eh... Neat. Not really sure if that's what they're intended for, but hey, whatever. Um, am a little concerned. I always get concerned when you have painted parts hanging very, very, very close to the ground. And this one is... You can probably fit a sheet of paper under it, and that's it. It's pretty low to the ground. So I'll take these and put these over here for when I do the um, robot mode. So yeah, not bad. Uh, he's got this uh, definitely IDW style, and you know this guy has a whole mini series dedicated to him, and now he's got a spotlight, uh, which is actually included with uh, his figure. Here's the uh, thing again. This is the backing of the package, which is kind of neat. Um, not the best. Can't show you what's in it, but I can talk a little bit of synopsis. Um, basically, it's another Earth story that takes place before they left Earth. <sighs> Is it great? Eh, it's not bad. I actually read it. I enjoyed it much more than I enjoyed the entire ongoing series and the entire Earth story within it. Um, I really do like uh, More Than Meets the Eye. That's currently. And even R R.I.D. Eh, it's okay. And, I mean, Bumblebee, I really don't like his character. I, I think that's what's preventing me from enjoying R.I.D. more. But, anyway, he rolls okay. Um, not the best. And, again, I'm concerned about the paint being too close to the ground. But, essentially, that's that. It's Bumblebee. Um, the only thing he doesn't come with that I think he should is his cane. Because this, in this part of the story, he had his cane. And he still has his cane. And I know they're trying to go with classics... Uh, IDW crossover type thing. But, you know, I have access to a 3D printer at my school. And I'm probably going to 3D print him a cane. Just because I can. And it... Come on. Why not? <laughs> um, so, yeah. Let's go ahead and get into the transformation here. I'll start off with the weapon. Um, basically, you want to pull these out straight. And you want to take these two and combine them together. Just tab together. And then you want to take one of these and pull it down. And there's the uh, blaster. I think this is a scatter blaster. No, that might not be right. I don't remember from the uh, Fall Cybertron game. It basically, they try to make this one look like a Fall Cybertron gun. 
Plus, they threw a little blue on there to make it look like the effect in the comic book. Um, yeah. So, basically, to start off the transformation here, we just want to untab stuff, which is actually not easy to do with this figure. It's very, once you get it together, it's very tight. It does not want to come undone. I tend to start with the bumper and pulling that apart, and then just trying to separate the doors from there. Uh, these peg in very, very tight, which I like. So, just pull these down, and when you do that, the back separates and becomes a knee guard, which is kind of neat, actually. Same on this side. And next, we will pull this down here on a ball and socket joint and out, and then put it, replace it back where it was. So down, out, and back. Then we want to, this whole leg is on a pin. And if you take this leg and you apply pressure here, it'll unsnap and peg in differently so the legs don't sit so far out. Took me the third transformation to notice that. So, we're good there. And now you have the legs done. Next, we're going to move the upper body, which I'm just going to adjust the camera just a little bit. And next, we just want to untab the front of the car. And the arms come down. Then this back panel, you notice it moves. But this whole front part of the car comes down and actually pegs into the back of the body. Now, this is the part of the transformation I think would make a decent uh, shooter figure from uh, Transformers Master Force or a good Nightbeat figure with the uh, way the arms can transform. So, and I'll show that off in a second. So, this can be pulled down snapped into place and revealing his head. Now this is where I was saying this could be a good Night B or shooter figure shooter figure from uh, Master Force. Essentially, if you unpeg these arms from the doors, you can move the arms independently from these. And like both Night B and Shuda, these doors hang down off his arms like that. So I think with a little bit of paint and an alternate head, this guy could double a shooter. From, you know, I, I'm just saying, I mean, maybe I could do like a 3D print of a transforming head for him and just have some fun. And, you know, this wouldn't be a bad project to get a second Bumblebee to do. I mean, either Night Beat or shooter or both. Because I think this mold actually works for it very well. Um, that's just my opinion, but uh, I'll continue with the transformation now. Uh, next, we want to pull this up. So he's got those uh, Rodimus-like arms. Then we want to bend the door here, and then bend this whole panel in. Same on the other side. And there you have his B wings in the back. Well, I'm not 100% sure... But I think there's a possible variant of these guys. Because if you noticed at Comic-Con, when they put these on display, Bumblebee didn't have his stripes. Now, I've seen a couple show up on the internet without stripes. I don't know if that's the rarity, or if the rarity is to have the stripes. Or if it's a wave variant. Like, um, because this guy, will, I think, will be out in the next wave as well. So he might or might not have the stripes on the chest. I guess we'll find that out when the time comes. But as of now, I thought I was getting this guy without the stripes. And then he shows up and I'm like, oh, he actually does have the stripes. So I don't know if it's a variant or if it was just an error on Hasbro's part, putting the wrong one in the display case. I don't know. But um, be on the lookout. I don't know which one's more rare. If, yours, if you get one, you're watching this review... Please let me know if this is these black stripes on his chest are painted or not. It's, I'm just curious to find out. Um, yeah, so some articulation here. Ball and socket joint 
in the foot. Uh, no side to side movement yet again. Front, front and back though. A little bit. And then you got motion in the foot here. Well, notice also, because in the uh, IDW comic book, he's got wheels on the bottom of his feet. You can actually see the tire treads here. So I can see somebody also painting the tire treads there. Although, why put another set of tires when you obviously have a set of tires here? I don't like when they do the molded detail of tires when you can clearly already see the tires. I, I just don't like when they do that. It's a personal pet peeve. So that's a ding. But not that bad, because that happens common. That's on almost every figure. Um, also, the paint on this arm is not good at all. It, does, it barely covers. Same on this side. I would have preferred those left black. Um, it, just my opinion, those should have remained black. Um, you got all the window pieces down here, and the back, the lights. A little bit of paint error here and here. Uh, it happens, quality control. Articulation continued here. Um, we got, uh, this is another annoyance, but I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, knee joint, well over 90 degrees. However, the kneecap actually moves separately from the knee joint. The knee joint is actually much lower than you would expect it to be. It's got a swivel, as well as a ball and socket joint in the hip. And there is no waist swivel. Just wanted to make sure because it didn't look like there what it looked like there could be, but it really wasn't. And I, I don't think that's the first time I checked either. It gives the impression that it does. So that other annoyance here with the backpack, this tends to want to hang down, and when it does, it sticks out from between his legs. I hate that. It does peg in up here. But not very securely. As soon as you tap it, there it goes again. It is what it is. It's not bad when it's like this. Um, so, yeah. Then we have the head swivel. This is not on a ball and socket joint, as far as I can tell. It is definitely on a swivel. Side to side, all the way around, whatever. Also, light piping, it doesn't work particularly well, but it's there. Doesn't have nearly as much paint as uh, Orion packs, but not bad. He's got a hinge here in the shoulder, as well as a uh, swivel in the arm, and another hinge inside the arm, the shoulder. Then... You have a swivel just below the el just above the elbow, and you have a kind of a ratchet friction hinge joint on the arm. The only other thing I would like to see on the arm for movement would be the hand swivel, because if you're going to make a cane for him, he should be able to swivel his hand. Um, he didn't come with a cane, so he didn't need one. Guess that's the logic. Uh, also, you got this, which I suppose if you really want to do, you could use it as a cane, but really, it's a gun. It's clearly a gun. Um, so yeah, he's got no problem holding this gun, even though it's almost as big as he is. I'm exaggerating, of course. And it actually looks really good. And I have to say, I'm... Actually, for not, for hating, not really hating, just not liking Bumblebee, I, I just never really cared for Bumblebee that much. But um, as far as not caring for Bumblebee, this is actually a really decent figure. Do I recommend it? If you're buying the entire wave, get it. If you're not... If you're just sick of seeing so many bumblebees, don't bother. But it's not bad. He's a little tall, I will say, in comparison to other Autobots, even at like Jazz. He, you can tell he's in a smaller scale because of his head, obviously, so he is shorter, but not by much. Well, I'll put him up against Rodimus here, which or a uh, Rodimus mold. I actually got a Rodimus up here. Let me use this. 
Um, we'll notice that even Rodimus is the same size and Rodimus towers over B. And even with the non-correctly scaled B, this guy is still shorter, even though his head's larger, giving him the impression that he should still be shorter, but here's even with classic B. I don't think either of these are scaled correct, but it's not bad. So uh, that's that. That's the review. If you have any questions about B, please uh, let me know. Um, if you have any concerns, questions about paint, want to tell me that yours didn't come with a paint chest, whatever, leave a comment down below and I will get back to you. Uh, is there anything else? I think that concludes the video review. Uh, thanks for watching and hope you enjoyed. And uh, if you like my videos, please subscribe.